Dave, 72 hours prior to the draft, how different is this draft presentation compared to the others you've been involved with, given what's happened in the NHL this season? Well, I think there's a few different moving parts here, you know, as we prepare for the draft. It's 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 its own entity, no question about it, but you've also got your eye on the compliance buyouts. You've got your eye on, you know, looming free agency that you now have a couple of days that you can bring somebody in for ahead of time. So there's a couple of different things moving around it, but you're focused on the draft itself. And Dave Morrison does a terrific job of keeping the guys in line and keeping them focused. And it's an amazing process because when you start each year, you think, okay, there's more variance than there's ever been. And it narrows and it narrows. And these guys beat each other up in the room mm -hmm. to the nth degree with their own region. So regional guys have a really, really strong opinion about players and they get them in the right slots. And you know, you'll get into a year where 20, they'll have 28 of the 30 first rounders, which is remarkable, but they do it. Tommy Bergman's done a pretty good job uh, given who's come out of Sweden. And uh, I think of Petter Granberg and the impact he has made in the last year in the three big championships. He's got an opportunity now to come to North America in a very good situation for him. How happy is the organization about his development? Well, it's a little bit different over there because of their, and, and that's where the importance of local knowledge is, is so distinct. Tommy does a great job of identifying a player who may be still playing in the junior system, may still be just tiptoeing into the elite system and really feeling out different, different pieces for how they develop and how exactly they get to the right place at the right time. And no one's curve is the same at all. And, you know, Petter has had now played... It was banged up. He was physically hurt. Played in the Elite Series this year. They won the championship mm -hmm. and then played in the first pairing on the national team. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we went through a window where you only had two years to make a decision on a European player. There was a, a piece of history, more or less, where a European player was classified as the same thing. It wasn't open-ended. Now we're back to four years where we don't have to make a contract decision for four years moving forward. That's the new CBA. Petter was a player that we made a decision on after two years, so essentially burned a year of the contract, not to get too technical, mm -hmm. um, leaving him in Sweden to develop. And, you know, once again, Tommy, he knows everybody there. He knows the different programs, the rate of development. Some teams accelerate players. Some teams keep players back. And that's the art of finding them in the right place at the right time. He's not going to be 21 until August. And I look at the Marlies. Just how young a hockey club will you have at Rico Coliseum starting in September? Well, part of the issue with having successful drafts and wanting to sign those draft picks is we will have as many somewhere probably between 15 and 18 entry-level contracts mm -hmm. you know so you're in your first three years of pro on the Marlies but that's part of the development plan um, we knew we were going to get younger there we knew we were going to be signing the players we drafted getting them into the system getting them under our coach there, getting them into the culture of the Toronto Maple Leafs organization and, and that's a good problem to have. How soon or how rushed might you people be to get a head coach in place given what you've got coming into the system? Uh, when might that decision be made for the Marlins? Uh, I think it'll be made fairly soon. It'll be made within the next, I would say, within the next couple of weeks. We're in the process of interviewing now. Uh, we will have uh, continue that. And once again, you've got a lot of moving parts going on right now. So, you know, you keep your focus where it is. But we, that's, that is a part of our... Um, our daily activity right now is that we are interviewing candidates with an excellent group of candidates and, and we'll continue to do so. And it's a come to destination isn't it? I think it's been referred to as the NHL's 31st team. I mean it is a unique situation especially for some of your older players that you might want to bring in to help mentor these younger guys. Older players with, with families. Yeah really I think we've done a good job with that. You know I think Mike Penny started this in mm -hmm. 2005 bringing the team back from St. John's and did a great job of getting it rolling and now we've um, you know probably the focus has probably changed it evolves and it continues to change and uh, but development is so important right now with the current CBA and and the idea is to have the culture the same in both locker rooms to have that that continuation of of the growth of a player where he can come up and play and go back down and play and it not be seen as a a penalty or a, a punishment or a demotion at all but just as part of the development I speak often about baseball and how you know a first round the first overall pick in baseball is going to play in the minors he just is and he's and he might start in class A and then up to double A and then up to triple A and there's an evolution to playing in the minors that's about getting better but it's very common for a, a highly touted major league baseball 
talent to make his debut at 23 or 24 years old, particularly a pitcher, that's not unusual at all. And I think with the current financial situation and CBA structure, that'll become more and more common in hockey.